Yep, yep, that still looks like the ceiling of the garage. Hi. Last night, I took over 200 pictures of the International Space Station with this telescope and that cell phone that you're watching right now. Of those pictures, about half were empty and unusable. Uh, of the remaining half, uh, about half of those ended up being either blurry or the space station was cut off on the edge. Uh, but the remaining quarter of all those photographs turned out to be pretty fantastic. Let's take a look. Now, it wasn't always like this. Over the past few months, I've actually attempted this several times. Let's take a look at those earlier attempts. Yeah. Okay, compared to the ones I took last night, these kind of look like I sketched the space station while I was on a roller coaster. So let's go, let's go back and look at the good ones. All right, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to take great pictures of the International Space Station using just a telescope and a cell phone. Now, before we jump into the nitty gritty, there's a couple things we need to know. First, why is the space station so hard to take a picture of? And secondly, how do we get notified when the space station is going to be flying over your house? So let's watch. So first of all, let's talk about this International Space Station. It's uh, circling the Earth, right, as the Earth spins underneath of it. Uh, and the space station is flying at a little over 17,000 miles per hour relative to the Earth. That's uh, pretty darn fast. And what's amazing is it's only about 250 miles up. So basically you take the width of uh, Ohio, a little bit wider than Ohio, and you turn it on its side. <laughs> okay, you got it, you got it, okay. All right, so uh, where was it? The space station is flying around the Earth at an altitude of about 250 miles. That's a little bit wider than the state of Ohio, if you were to tilt that um, on its side, uh, which relative to this globe, it's actually about as, about as thick as my pinky smash. So the space station is really just almost skimming around the Earth. It's, it's pretty fascinating. But again, uh, we can capture this using a, a system that I basically put together. It's pretty straightforward. Um, and I'm going to show you step by step how to do that. The first thing we have to do is find out when the space station is flying over your neighborhood. Now, there's a couple ways to do that. Uh, there's a couple uh, applications on your phone, smartphone, that can do that. One of the most useful ones is actually called uh, Clear Outside. That'll give you a, a, a rough estimate of when the space station is flying over. But the one that I use is actually called spotthestation.nasa.gov. It's actually a service through NASA. You sign up, you give it your general location, and if the space station is flying over your house that evening, then you'll get an email about 12 hours ahead of time. It doesn't email you if the space station is flying over at say four in the morning or at high noon, uh, because those you either can't see it or it's too inconvenient. Um, unless you enjoy getting up at four in the morning, even then you might not even be able to see it just due to how the sun is shining on it. So that particular service from NASA will email you when it is flying basically between about seven o'clock and 11 o'clock uh, or when the, when the sun is still shining on it. And the space station is pretty amazing. It goes very fast. This is the problem that makes it a challenge actually. I, I don't like to use the word problem. I like to use a challenge. The space station flies very fast through the sky, about as fast as basically an airliner flies over. And it's usually very, very bright. Um, so it's pretty easy to see. Uh, the challenge, of course, is tracking. Uh, I track the space station by hand. I'll show you how to do that. I use my viewfinder and I have the phone. It is attached to the eyepiece. And I actually, to prevent the phone from shaking, I use a Bluetooth shutter button. So let's go out to the workshop and I'll show you step by step how to do this. All right, step one is to pick the right eyepiece. And by right eyepiece, I mean the one with the right magnification. We'll get to that in just a moment. Step two involves attaching your cell phone properly to the telescope. Step three is properly setting up the camera app on your phone and then doing a test focus on something like the moon or Jupiter. Jupiter is a great thing to do a test focus on because it's also very similar brightness to the space station. So we can get all the light sensitivity settings uh, for that. 
Step one is to choose the proper eyepiece. And by the proper eyepiece, I mean the one that gets you the correct magnification. Now, for getting the space station, I found through testing that you need a magnification of about uh, 250 times. Now, how do you pick the eyepiece that has the proper magnification? Well, it depends on your telescope. Each telescope has its own focal length. The two popular lengths for at least these Dobsonians is uh, 1200 millimeters or 1500 millimeters. If, if you don't know yours, you can look on the telescope. Uh, sometimes there is a boilerplate somewhere on there or a sticker that tells you exactly what the focal length is. So what you do is you take the focal length and you divide it by 250 and that gives you the focal length of the eyepiece that you need. Now for this one it's 1500 millimeters and so if I divide that by 250, right, I get six millimeters. So that means I need to use at least a six millimeter eyepiece or something even more powerful. But for your first time out, I recommend using the six millimeter. So this is all step one. Pick the proper eyepiece that gives you the magnification of about 250. Now I forgot to mention that you can use almost any telescope. I'm using the Dobsonian here. Uh, it gathers a lot of light, but you can also use a, uh, a refractor or you can use a smaller Dobsonian. Uh, almost any telescope will do as long as it has a, a very accurate viewfinder. Um, and I'll explain in a moment why that's very important. Step two is to properly attach uh, your eyepiece, the camera adapter, and the cell phone uh, onto your telescope. So. I have a whole separate video that goes into the nitty gritty detail of setting this up. So I'm not gonna do that here. I will give you the basics. So let's talk about just the basics. All right, we're gonna open up the camera app. Uh, this is a uh, Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus. It's about three years old, uh, but the camera app does have a mode called uh, Pro Mode. Click on the Pro. Pro Mode gives you access to three very important items. The first is manual focus. You can either do manual focus to infinity or manual focus to something close up. Of course, stars and everything are very, very far away, including the space station. Consider them to be uh, infinitely far away, so make sure you have it locked on infinite focus. If you have it on uh, autofocus, when you have a cell phone pointed up at the sky, um, it, uh, it starts to hunt for focus and it's just a big pain in the neck. So make sure you leave it on uh, infinite focus here. The other option is the light sensitivity, the ISO. This one goes from 800 down to 50. So super bright objects, you can change it. Uh, you can drop it down to 50. For very dim objects, you can change it up to 800. Um, you, can, you can try to go between 400 and 800. Either of those will probably work with the space station. Uh, you'll be able to compensate with the shutter speed. The space station is flying over pretty fast and you're zoomed way in. So you're gonna need to up that shutter speed to at least about uh, uh, 250th of a second, maybe even 500th of a second. Uh, now, of course, the higher the shutter speed, the dimmer the image goes, so you're gonna have to play a balance. But I typically go uh, 800 ISO and about uh, 1 250th shutter speed. So there you go. Set the ISO, set the shutter speed, and set manual focus to infinity. Okay, so the camera app is ready to go. So, you've got the proper eyepiece, you've got the phone set up with the proper uh, application settings, you've got sensitivity. Uh, you've gone ahead and you've done a test focus on either the moon or Jupiter. Jupiter's great because it has the proper uh, light brightness. Uh, it'll be great if you get it set up properly for Jupiter. It'll probably work really well for the space station, okay? But here we are. The space station is never late. So when you get that email that says it's going to be there at, say, 745, you need to go out about 15 minutes early or even earlier if, it's, if you need to acclimate the telescope. Uh, so you go out there. And prior to the space station flying over, you do your test focus on Jupiter. You make sure the app is working, and it looks like it is. And now comes the key part, and I'm going to let you know. This is the super bonus, and it's called a Bluetooth shutter button. You can get them on Amazon for about 10 bucks. Now, the reason this is important is because you're going to be following the space station in the viewfinder. There's a crosshair in here, and you'll want to keep the crosshairs on the space station as tightly as possible. You're really zoomed in. So just do the best job that you can. Uh, but of course, if you're doing that, you can't keep pushing the shutter button, right? So you need this Bluetooth shutter button. This is where it's great to have a wonderful assistant. I have my daughter who is helping us out here, and she's gonna demonstrate the Bluetooth shutter button by pushing it. And you can see it taking lots of pictures. So as soon as you see the space station and you start following it with your viewfinder, have your assistant start pushing that button and just never stop. You're gonna end up with like 100 or 200 pictures after you traverse the entire route of the space station, you're going to have a lot of pictures, some of which will be bad, but you're going to have a lot that are going to be really good too. 
All right, stop the presses. I just got an email from NASA's Spot the Station service. Um, it says that there's going to be a space station flyover tonight at exactly 7.59 p.m. It's going to be visible for about six minutes. This is a long one. Um, so we'll drag this outside and we'll try it again tonight and see if we can get some really good pictures. Um, I want to try uh, extreme magnification tonight, so we'll, we'll see if we get some really close-up pictures. Wish us luck. All right, so we've got it all set up. I've just test focused it on Jupiter. I have the ISO setting at 800. I have the shutter speed at 350, and you can see Jupiter on the screen. So then, Jupiter right there. Yeah. And in about two minutes, the space station is flying over. We're going to start tracking it. I have to make sure that uh, the viewfinder is always on the space station as we're going, and my helper, my daughter, has the Bluetooth, and she's going to test it. She's going to try to take a picture right now. Okay, so it's working. So we're ready to go. We're just waiting for the space station to pop up over the horizon. Wish us luck. Uh, to prevent the, oops, to prevent the phone from shaking, 